This video is going to show you the structure I used to get a 20 out of 20 for my comparative text response. And I've done similar videos like this in the past for text response and argument analysis. So it might be helpful to look at the text response one because essentially what we're doing here for the comparative is doing two mini text response essays and then linking them together using some comparative phrases. So let's check it out. So there is a lot of variety with these structures that you can play around with. And the examiners don't really have a preference as long as it meets the criteria. Now, with that being said, there are some structures that are more practical than others. And the one that I want to focus on today is the integrated structure. And to visually represent this, we have an intro, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. And each body paragraph is going to focus on one large theme, and we will be talking about both text in each one. Now let's look at each part in detail. For my intro, I had three sentences. So the first one was a contextualizing sentence. And the purpose of this is to give some background for your text. So this could be about where they are set, what time, or what political or social issues they explore. And here is an example for you to see. Next sentence is where you introduce your text and broadly speaking, what their purpose is. So in this case, I say, attempting to rectify these injustices, Fred de Guard's The Longest Memory, and Wesley Enoch slash Deborah Mailman's The Seven Stages of Grieving, challenge a system where racist notions of skin color dictated the experiences of those oppressed and favored those more superior. So first thing to note here that this sentence links with the topic, because as you can see, it shares many of the same keywords, which in this case are skin color and experiences. So make sure in the introduction that you have the keywords of the topic somewhere. And this allows you to directly answer the topic, which is extremely important. And then the next sentence that we have is our contention. And essentially what you want to do here is to outline your overall stance, as well as touch on the message of the text. So basically, what are the two texts trying to achieve from the reader? And in this case, I say, through exposing readers to the traumatic experiences of those oppressed, again, note the keyword experience, both texts assert the importance of collectively listening to those long silenced voices so that the color of one's skin can no longer be a simplistic sign of social division. So this outlines my view on the topic quite clearly, as well as the message. And just as a bonus tip, I quite like to use the sentence stem through dot dot dot, both texts assert. So you might find this helpful to articulate your contention. Now, moving on to body paragraphs. I have split it up like this so it's visually easier to see, and I'll give a broad overview first of each of the different parts. At the top, we have the topic sentence. And then next, we talk about text 1, which is coloured in red. And if you've seen my text response video, you know that instead of doing explain and evidence like a teal structure, I instead use the how, what, why structure, which is basically the same thing as explain and evidence but it's a bit more specific, which you'll see later on. So for text one, each block here is one, how, what, why. And in total, you can see I have two, but this number can vary depending on how much you write for each topic. And then in the middle, we have a transition sentence that goes from text one to text two. And then in blue, we have text number two, and we are also going to be doing around two, how, what, whys. So in these two chunks. And you can see in green, that is our comparison which I'll touch on in a second. And finally, we have our linking sentence. All right, let's see how we can write each part. For my topic sentence, I like to broadly mention one common theme that both texts have. So in this case, the theme is power and oppression. And just note for each of my body paragraphs, they all focus on one common theme. And if you look at my full sample essay, which is linked below for free, my second body paragraph is focused on the theme of defeat slash compliance. And my third body paragraph is focused on hope slash freedom. So I found that focusing on one main theme for each body paragraph allows you to group similar ideas very nicely and effectively. But back to this topic sentence, I basically say, sanctioned by racist ideologies, the vast economic empires in both texts were founded upon dehumanizing policies that entitled one skin color over the other. And again, you can see that I'm mentioning the keywords of the topic, so skin color in this case. 
Moving on to text one, we want to support our topic sentences with some examples. And I have two examples here, one in each block, just so it's easy to see. And for each block, our structure is going to be how, what, why. So let's go through what each section means and just know that they don't have to be in this order. So first up here, we have what. So what point are you trying to make? In this case, I'm saying, in De Gua's text, the social and political privileges granted to the powerful patriarchs were entrenched through deplorable abuses of power. So that's what I'm trying to say. That's my point. And then next is how. So how is that point that I just made supported in the text? And in other words, this is your quote. For example, embodying the stale southern beliefs that Africans were inferior, Mr. Whitechapel and his fellow plantation owners employ the whip that eats flesh. So, as you can see, that is my quote. Next is why. So why does that quote that I just showed you support my point, and why does it link to the topic? So just note that how and what are usually based off the actual text, whereas why is usually based off your own interpretation and analysis. And if you're struggling to analyze, use verbs such as highlights, because these types of verbs force you to analyze, and it prevents you from just summarizing the text. So to read out the why from this part, it actually begins from the end of the previous sentence. So to enforce the notion that slaves were not like them. That's why, because that is my own interpretation. Hence, this highlights the sole purpose of these public displays of savagery was to assert the dominance of master over slave. And just note, this also links to the topic because it's implicitly talking about those experiences and the disparity of skin colors. So that was my first example, or my first block, and now I repeat it again. So in this case, here you can see that I have my how, what, and why all in one sentence. So carrying these same racist beliefs, the Virginian editorials erroneously equated slaves with chattel and stock. That is my how and my what. Then my why, highlighting their callous prioritization of profit over human dignity. And my next sentence is a continuation of the why. So through commodifying slaves through cold economic rationale, plantation owners were able to have significant physical and psychological control over those who were treated like an investment. So that just shows you that the how or why structure is very flexible. As long as you have all three parts in there, then that is completely fine. So next is our transition sentence. And here I like to compare or contrast the text in a more specific way compared to my topic sentence. So for example, where De Gua blames constitutionally sanctioned injustices, Enoch and Melman posit that colonial prejudices and its ongoing impacts are the reasons why racism remains ingrained and institutionalized. So for this example, I chose to contrast one point and talk about the differences. If you want to see some other examples, then again in the full sample essay below, you'll be able to see how I approach this sentence for the other paragraphs. Now for the second text, you can see that we also have two blocks to support our points. And just know that each block has the exact same structure as before. So how, what, why. The only difference now is that we add a bit of comparison, which you can see in green. And I just put it at the start because it's extremely important not to forget this in your essay. So for example, akin to the abuse of power of the plantation owners, which is in the first text, so that's my comparison, Enoch and Mailman orally exposed the hostility of European imperialists in Invasion Hall, where the ominous soundscapes of a chair scraping and a door closing forebodingly conjure an image of entrapment. So that is my how and my what. Their next sentence is my why. This allegorical scene alludes to the invasion, genocide, protection and assimilation stages of Aboriginal history, where the nature of the imperialist skin colour allow them to suppress any physical and psychological freedoms through a single wave of a stick. So you can see for this entire block, I am talking about similarities. In the next block, I talk about differences, which is why I begin with, with a greater focus on contemporary injustices. And then the rest of the structure is exactly the same. So the deliberate sequencing into more modern scenes reveals cultural genocide seeps into modern day racial profiling. That's my what, so what I'm talking about. Whether it be the whitewashing of Vox death in Mugshot's detached court report, or the hypocritical depiction of Aboriginal marches as defiant, so that's my how, it is clear that the experiences of Indigenous Australians are fabricated 
to suit the privileged lifestyles of the mainstream public, and that is my why. So just to summarize, we are basically doing how, what, why two times for each text. So around four times in total for one entire paragraph. And then your linking sentence is more broad, and you can talk about what both texts say about the topic, as well as any similarities or differences they have. So for example, through the officious white voices in both novella and the play, it is clear that the prejudice woven into the social fabric results in starkly different experiences for marginalized characters. So again, it's important to link to the topic here as well. So that's the structure for body paragraphs. So repeat this three times, and that is pretty much your full essay. And again, I have the full sample linked below, so you can take a closer look. And just remember that there can be variations between each paragraph. So let's say you want to talk about one example in more detail, as opposed to having two of these shorter examples or blocks. So as with all rules, remember that after you understand them, feel free to add your own personal twist, that is completely fine. And this has been the structure of body paragraphs. Final thing is the conclusion. And like the intro, I also like to have three sentences. So first, I like to talk about the broader message and why we even care about these texts in the first place. So for example, although the implication remains that the consequences of racial prejudice on individual and collective identities continue to reverberate today, the simple existence of these two texts determined to correct prevailing narratives suggests that the spirit of resistance survives. The next sentence, I like to summarize these two texts and what they seek to achieve. For example, whether it be African America or Indigenous Australia, De Guar, Enoch, and Mailman all provide hope for meaningful reconciliation, as more resilient and progressive voices publicly implore for social change. And then third, this is a bit optional, but I found it really powerful if you could end your essay with a quote from one of your texts. And in this case, I actually had one quote from both of my texts. And since my second text was a play, I also used a bit of theatre language. So I said, and so by the play's final curtain, as the ice around our hearts thaws, it may be finally possible to unravel the prodigious carpet and genuinely begin the entire fabric again. So this is talking about the social fabric and how these two books show that we can correct and change the social fabric that we're in. That is the video. I hope that was helpful and it gave you some ideas on how to structure these essays. And as always, if you want to support me, a somewhat small YouTuber, then I would really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And take care.